wherever we are, that is where God is. A couple items we want to share with you. One, our text messaging campaign will begin this week. Members and friends, this is another opportunity for us to stay in contact with you, to make sure that we're all on the same page and we can continue to grow together in relationship. Please be mindful if there is a need that you have during this time of COVID-19, make sure you contact your diaconate member of your care group, as well as contact the church office. We want to continue to be with you. We want to continue to bless you and draw together during this season. Online giving is available now if you want to support the work here at the Christian Church in Philadelphia. You can join us by PayPal at paypal.me backslash church in Phila, or you can download the Tithely app and just look up the Christian Church. For members and friends, you can mail it at 8044 Stedden Avenue. Whatever the case is, we thank God that you have joined with us today. I want to thank Brother Alex Gary, our musician, as well as Brother Eric Nicholson, for being here with us this morning, and for all of you for joining us. Our call to worship this morning. Almighty God, give us wisdom to perceive you, intellect to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and everlasting God, it is once again you've allowed us to be here, to join together in various places, both near and far, from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Lord, we thank you for gathering us this day. Lord, we lift up to you those that are on the front lines of the COVID-19 response. We lift up the hospital workers and the doctors and the nurses. We lift up those that are working at the grocery stores and the janitors, Lord, that are seeking to clean. Lord, we lift up all those who are being affected right now, the families, the brothers, the sisters, the mothers, the fathers, the aunts, the uncles, Lord. We need you now in this time. Give us strength. Give us peace. Give us understanding. Give us courage to meet the issues of our time. Lord, bless those who are on the other sound of my voice this morning. I don't know who is feeling fearful, Lord, but give them strength. I don't know who needs peace this morning, Lord, but give them peace. Lord, for I know that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can even ask or think. So we thank you right now. We thank you right now for wisdom in times like these. We thank you for those that are on our shut-in list. We thank you for our leaders who are seeking to lead us. Lord, we love you this day. And help us to pray the prayer together that you taught your disciples to pray. And we all say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as you forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you are joining us this morning, if you are joining us this morning, we ask that you would turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. We will begin reading at verse 46, and we will read through the close of the chapter. Mark, chapter 10 beginning at verse 46, and we will go all the way through the close of the chapter. If you are in your homes, on your couches, at your kitchen tables, will you stand in the honor of the reading of God's word? 
I'm reading from the New American Standard Version, and it reads as follows. Then they came to Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus the Nazarene, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept out crying all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, stand up, he is calling for you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus, and answering him, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. Thus ends the reading of our text this morning. You may be seated. For the next few moments, beloved, I will share with you from the subject, now is not forever. Now is not forever. I can't take credit for the title this morning. My friend, the Reverend Dr. Charles L. Howard, the chaplain at the University of Pennsylvania, he put this out some time ago as a reminder and encouragement to many of us during this time that now is not forever. It's so good to see so many of you this morning because I know D. Nice had y'all jamming till the wee hours of the morning. But you made it. You made it and you pulled it up right on time. It is good to see you. I was trying to work self-destruction in there somewhere. But it didn't work out. But it's good to see you this morning. Beloved, the truth of the matter is we ask this question, when will it stop? When will people stop acting as petulant children and practice the social distancing that all of the medical experts across the globe are asking us to? When will the count of those that are infected by COVID-19 cease from rising at a speed which rivals the Marvel character, the DC character, Flash? When will it be okay just to be and enjoy the springtime as we've done in years past? These are the questions that if we are brave enough, if we're brave enough to admit we find these questions large in the base of our subconscious. We find ourselves thinking about them when we go to bed and when we rise in the morning, these questions that permeate our very being. But I thank God. I thank God for those who are able to respond in times like these and bring a smile to our faces once again, for now is not forever. I thank God that we were able to dance with D-Nice last night as 100,000 people joined him on Instagram Live as we began to count down all of the jams of our childhood, of our young adulthood, of even yesterday and tomorrow. I thank God that we're able to remind ourselves the feeling of what it is to enjoy, what it is to stop feeling trapped, and what it means to stop feeling nervous, to know what it feels like to stop feeling scared. Say amen if you know anything about that or if you were dancing in your kitchen last night. And before people begin to hyper-spiritualize what I just said, before people begin to say to me, well, you can't be scared, well, you can't be anxious, well, God says this and God says that before we go off on the deep end, walk with me through the scriptures for a while. For the fact of the matter is everybody who has crossed the face of this earth has felt a tinge of fear at some times. Everybody has been confused about what tomorrow holds at some point 
in their lives. Walk with me, will you? Count it down, and why don't we start with Jesus? Before anybody tells me what they think I don't already know, let's remember his feelings when he was on his way to the cross. You know the scripture. Lord, if there's any way, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, thy will be done. Walk with me to Moses at the burning bush when he said to God, I, I, I can't talk too well. He was nervous about his stutter. Walk with me. As we remember Abraham and God said, Abraham, go to a land I will show you. And he was a little bit nervous because God hadn't shown him the whole picture. Let's keep on going lest anybody get confused. Don't you remember Peter's fear when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane? Don't you remember how Gideon felt when God took away all, almost all of his forces the fact of the matter is, friends, the list goes on and on. And I want you to know, if no one says this to you, the feelings that you feel from time to time are natural. They're very real. And they're very understandable. For we are living in strange times. The fact of the matter is, your humanity allows for many of these feelings, but I wouldn't be the pastor and preacher and the man of God that God called me to be if I did not tell you this morning that now is not forever, Jesus. That things always do change. There must be a reminder to those who find themselves today, to Sister Dara and to Brother Smith, to all of those joining us by Facebook, I have to tell you that even in the midst of darkness, light is coming above the horizon. Can you say amen? This is the sentiment that we are living right now, that hope still, still is here. That we are hoping that things will change. That we are hoping that our kids will go back to school. That we are hoping that we don't always have to travel with bottles of Lysol and Perel. That innocence can be regained. And if not innocence, then maybe we can just have the joy of ignorance. There is a constant shifting in the cosmos, my friends. And that cements the fact today that now is not forever. If you'll recall last week, we left off with Jesus and his disciples traveling to Jerusalem. And on the way, Jesus says this quote, When we get to Jerusalem, I will be mocked, I will be spit upon, I will die. However, it was only the beginning of the journey. Because Jesus in that time reminded the disciples that in order to be great, oh, hear it, friends, in order to be great, in order to be important, you must first be willing to serve. See, in order to lead, you must be willing to put the needs of others before yourself. We have this idea that's twisted in this time that everybody that wants to be a leader believes that it has to be about them, but that is the furthest thing from the truth. Mark chapter 10 says that if we want to be great, we first have to cast ourselves as a sacrifice for others. And that is what I see on my television screens. That is what I see and hear on the radio. What we are witnessing are health workers, doctors and nurses and researchers and grocery workers and janitors. What I see every day are people upon people seeking to lead through their service. This journey of destiny unfolds and it continues into this week as we move our way to Jericho, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. We remember the city of Jericho that Joshua marched around with his army. We remember this city of Jericho that is known to be or considered to be the oldest city in the world. A city of massive historical, cultural, and political importance located by the Dead Sea. Here we meet a man, 
a man who is only described by his condition. Here we meet blind Bartimaeus. The only things we know about Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10 are one, he's blind. And two, we know who his daddy is. One, he's blind. And two, we know who his daddy is. But his station in life has brought him to his current condition of being a beggar. The fact of the matter is, the times that we live in now, many find themselves financially insecure. There are many people who are doing many things just trying to collect enough money to make the bills or enough money to feed the children. Here we see in blind Bartimaeus an outcast from society, somebody who we would rather not see because if it's out of sight, then it's out of mind. But I believe that Mark wanted us to know Bartimaeus, yet he sees his chance right now to change his situation. Brothers and sisters, if you don't hear anything else I say to you today, hear this. One of the most important things that you have right now is right now. Let me say it once again. One of the most important things you have right now is right now. Too many times we freely are giving away our opportunities to make something better. We allow the sadness of our current condition to blind us from what lies in front of us. I'll tell you a little story about me. I've tried my best at social distancing. I went to the gas station the other day to get some gas because I had to go see my dad and I found myself holding my breath as I went into the gas station. I held my breath for 90 seconds. <laughs> I held my breath for 90 seconds in and out of the gas station. I told the man how much gas I wanted with my fingers. Then I pointed to the pump that I wanted. I'm doing my best to practice social distancing. I tell you, my wife, God bless her. God bless my wife, Erica, and my, my daughters, Alice and Ava and Alana. Thank God for them. But my wife started talking to me about going to Target. Let me tell you what I told her. I'm not going to Target. They told me to stay home. I'm doing my best to stay home, but I will give you a hint. I found out something new. They will bring it out to your car if you order in advance. Say hallelujah. <laughs> I found out about the drive through target. I tell you, here is what we see in the times that we are living in, in the midst of our pseudo quarantine. I realize some things. That there is joy in being able to see my baby Allison grow. That I've been able to witness the talents, the quirks, the blessedness of my family. We've been able to eat together. We've been able to laugh together. We've been able to yawn together. We've been able to dance together. In the midst of your now, brothers and sisters, be sure to grasp everything that is available to you right now, for your now is not forever. Make sure you call that loved one. Make sure you are writing some letters. Make sure you are growing in your talents. Try to cook something new. The fact of the matter is, when your opportunity comes, make sure you grab it, for one of the greatest things you have right now is right now. Bartimaeus sees his chance, and he takes it. Can you imagine how long he's been blind before he realized that I'm in the presence of somebody who can change my situation? Can you realize the feelings of despair, the feelings of abject poverty, that now, he says, somebody is here who can do something about my condition, but the interesting thing to me is what he asked for. What did he ask for? Look at what the text says. It says in verse 47 that when Jesus comes around on his way to Jerusalem to be mocked and spit and to die, Bartimaeus says, Lord, have mercy on me. This word mercy literally means don't give me what I do deserve. And it's amazing to me that this is the man's request. We see a sense of fatalism that is present. That Bartimaeus is just asking for mercy. 
Why not ask to be healed? We learned in school that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Closed mouths, don't get fed, ask for what you want. It's amazing to me that he asked for mercy, but he doesn't originally ask to be healed. And um, it begs to ask the question, does he believe that he did something wrong for which he now feels guilty? Does he believe that he played a part in his own blindness? I tell you, brothers and sisters, this is a dangerous way of thinking. Because if we look with clear eyes at the text, many of us will understand that you are holding on to some things that you need to let go. That you are holding on to some things that you've been beating yourself up over, even in the midst of COVID-19, before or after. And the fact of the matter is, you got to let it go. You can't always beat yourself up and say, well, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Sometimes you just have to take advantage of the now. The Bible is clear, Brother Eric. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are found in Jesus Christ. The truth of the matter is, all of us have messed up. All of us have fumbled. But the fact is, God is still beckoning us back home. Here, Bartimaeus asked for mercy, and he asked for mercy. And here we see, as a reader, and we witness to the text, and we get to see how serious is Bartimaeus about receiving this mercy that he wants. For I tell you this, when you decide you are trying to change your condition, when you decide that you want to better yourself, there will always be opposition. I will put it this way for any folks that can gather the lingo, haters are going to hate. I saw a meme the other day. I saw a meme of Dr. Anthony Fauci, and he was rubbing his head at a press conference as, he was, as those were trying to explain the stance and the, the goals of combating this coronavirus. I began to watch Dr. Fauci, and he began to rub his head, and he began to have a look on his face as to what are we talking about, what are we doing. But the fact of the matter is, even in the midst of the opposition to what he is trying to lead us to understand, Dr. Fauci keeps on giving us the facts. He keeps on providing recommendations for success. He keeps on speaking with a sober honesty that is quite refreshing. He does not give in. He keeps pushing forward because you learn a lot about yourself when opposition sets in. Some of us have been going stir crazy in the house, but we learn a lot about ourselves when opposition sets in. We learn whether or not we feel comfortable with ourselves, comfortable with our families. Have we taken some time? The fact of the matter is, I would argue that what this has shown us is that we are too busy, that we are too burdened that we have too many things going on that have drawn us away from the dinner table, that have drawn us away from family game night, that we've forgotten how to play Connect Four because we are trying to be so relevant. The fact of the matter is, beloved, your now is not forever. We have to take advantage of the now, right now. Notice what the text says. They said, well, stop talking, and Bartimaeus keeps on shouting. They say, Bartimaeus, be quiet, and he keeps on talking. Bartimaeus, 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 yet he does not stop. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know if I know you and how I know you, but I want you to hear me and hear me well. Keep pushing. Keep praying. Keep, keep striving. Your now will not be forever. My grandfather said it this way, you got to keep your hand to the plow until you reap in the day of harvest. Change is on the way. And since we know that change is on the way, since we understand that now will not be forever, what I want you to do is I want you to be courageous. Now we've seen it in the scriptures time and time again, be courageous. 
See, the fact of the matter is today requires courage and tomorrow requires courage. Talk to your ancestors. Yesterday required courage. We must be courageous in the face of the obstacles that we are facing. But get this, I'm not talking about the type of courage that is always announcing to everybody that it's courageous. I'm not talking about the type of courage that comes under false pretenses. No, I'm talking about the courage to finally take the steps that will change your life. The courage to finally take the steps to change our lives. The courage to stay inside. The courage to practice social distancing. The courage to keep reading your scriptures. The courage to be disciplined enough to do your job at home. The courage to take time out of your day to share with your children. The courage to don't give up on the sixth grade math. Hallelujah. But make sure you do it with them. And if you can't understand it, watch a YouTube video for it because there's something on YouTube for everybody. I'm talking about the courage to be greater than we've ever thought we could be. To stand in the midst of the obstacles in our way. The courage to move forward after the divorce. Jesus. The courage to believe God when the doctor says something else. The courage to change our lives. That is what we see. Courage in our living and in our actions. In the things that we envision that we will be met with a miraculous tomorrow. One that is filled with hope and joy. Notice what happens in the text. Bartimaeus had to get up. After everybody had told him, after everybody had said to him, after everybody told him to be quiet after being blind for a long time, he had to have the courage to stand up and to go to Jesus. And now we see a clarification of the message that he said earlier. Previously in verse 47, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. But now that he's face to face with God, now that he's face to face with Jesus, you can't be talking in riddles. You got to say what you want. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Verse 51 is very clear that Bartimaeus gets it out. He says, Lord, I want to regain my sight. I tell you right now, what do you want the Lord to do for you today? And I'm not talking about talking in code. I'm not talking about trying to talk in riddles. You got to be playing with what it is you need. You got to be playing with what it is you want from the Lord. I asked the Lord this morning, Lord, I want more patience. I wasn't trying to talk around the issue. I needed it to be the best husband and father and pastor and professor and brother that I can be. Lord, this is what I need from you. And when we come to the Lord, when we come to God and we speak the words in clarity, I tell you, you got to make sure you believe that the one who you are asking for is the one who is able to do it. I told somebody the other day, I'm not feeling bad because we're not gathered at 8044 Staten Avenue, but I do have a challenge for my brothers and sisters. I want you to believe God as much as you believe your hand sanitizer. You put it on your hands as if you believe it's going to do everything that they told you it could be. You weren't there when they put it in the bottle. You don't know what they actually put in the bottle. You're believing it's going to kill 99.9% of the germs in your life. I want us to have the same faith in God that we have in the Lysol spray. We spray it on our shoes and we spray it on our clothes, believing it's going to do what we think it will do. I don't know if there's one or two of you out there today that are willing to put the same amount of faith in God to believe that God can do what he said he can do. I believe God, Jesus says, after Bartimaeus kicks it out and says, I want to see, Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. Saints keep believing. COVID-19 will not be forever. Your tears and your fears will not be forever. Your station in life will not be forever. 
But I don't know where you're sitting or who you're sitting with, but just tell if there's someone around you, say forever is on the way. This now will not be forever, but I tell you there is one who is from everlasting to everlasting. There is one who is the author and the finisher of our faith. There is one who sits high and looks low. There is one who has been with us since the beginning. Because Genesis chapter 1 says, in the beginning, God. And we saw the word, the logos, was with God. And we saw the spirit hovering over the surface of the deep. Now will not be forever. But there is a forever that is to come. His name is Jesus. And it rings out from the heavens from now until eternity. There is forever and his name is Jesus He's seated on the right hand of the Father, interceding for both you and I. There is forever, and his name is Jesus, and he is here with us, even in the midst of our time. And he is asking you today, what do you want from me? Now, I'm not going to talk like some of these prosperity preachers. Many of them found themselves in trouble when this COVID-19 hit because they were spending money that they didn't have, and now they find themselves in a jam. But I tell you this, there is someone who says, ask while heaven is open. Make sure you're asking in line with the word of God. What do you want from Jesus today that's in line with the word of God? Come to Jesus so that you can see like our mess. Then we shall join together with a thunderous rendition in song. Then we shall join together on the mountains as we look to the valleys. Then we shall join together and sing the words of the hymn. It was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by grace I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day your now is not your forever God is still in the healing business. God is still in the blessing business. God can touch you where you are right now, even if no one else is around you. Even if no one else is near you, you can talk to God right now. I talked to the Lord a long time ago. I said, if you give me grace, I'll point the folks back to you. If you've never received Jesus Christ, I invite you to say this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I need you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. With my heart, I have believed, and that results in righteousness. With my mouth, I make confession, and that results in salvation. Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you prayed that prayer with me, my brothers and sisters, I tell you right now, the Lord has done something for you. Now, if folks say to you, well, you got to confess all your sin, I, I tell them this, you can't even remember all your sin. So how are you going to confess what you don't remember? But God said, I can bless you. I can clean you up. I can bring you unto me. And so if you are able to pray that prayer today, the Lord is able to bless you right now. I hadn't planned on singing, but if you want to sing this song, we're going to sing one verse. Because the thing about the internet is it stays forever. So stand with us. We're going to sing this verse.
forever but there is a forever to come if this has blessed you today we ask that you would let us know send us a message if you would like to sow a seed into the ministry here at the Christian Church please look at our Facebook page visit our website but I tell you this I've made a decision as for me and my house we will believe God I'm gonna believe that God can sustain us I'm going to believe that God can bless you. I can believe that God will lift you up. I choose to believe God. But now is not forever. Let us pray. Dear Lord, it's once again. You look past all of our faults and you saw exactly what we needed. It's once again. We've been reminded of your grace and your mercy, your love and the joy that is found in you. It's once again, we remember that we are thankful for our families and friends, that we are thankful for the doctors and the nurses, that we are thankful for the janitors and the cleaners, that we are thankful for the folks that are restocking the food shelves, that we're thankful for the pharmacists who are providing the medicine. We are thankful for the courage that you give us courage to delight in your presence. Bless us, Lord, as we leave here. We look forward to being back the same time, the same place, next Sunday via this internet until the time that we can come back together in the body. We will hold fast to your hand. We will build our hopes on things that are eternal. We will trust you with our todays and our tomorrows. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory and majesty power and dominion both now, henceforth and forever and all of God's people said let the church say Thank you.